everyone, my name is Alexis Matias and my final presentation topic is malaria. So what is malaria? Malaria is an infectious disease caused by a parasite that invades red blood cells. The parasite commonly infects a certain type of mosquito and is transmitted to humans and animals when they are bitten by one. Malaria has afflicted humans for thousands of years. Clay tablets with cuneiform script from Mesopotamia mention a deadly periodic fever suggestive of malaria. Malaria was also found to be an Egyptian remains dating back to 3200 BC. And in the first century AD, malaria's arrival in Rome was a turning point in European history. And for the next 2000 years, whenever crowded settlements and standing water was harbored, malaria flourished. In 1880, a French army doctor by the name of Charles Louis Alphonse Laveran discovered the single cell protozoan that caused malaria. In 1897, Surgeon Major Ronald Ross discovered the mosquito stages of malaria. And in 1948, the third piece of the human malaria puzzle was solved as a sanctuary for human malaria outside of blood cells was found to be in the liver. There are four kinds of malaria parasites that infect humans. Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium ovale, and Plasmodium malariae. P. falciparum is the type that is most likely to result in severe infections and may lead to the death if not treated promptly. Malaria is not a contagious disease. The most common way that people obtain malaria is by being bitten by an infected female Anopheles mosquito, which is a vector of malaria. Only these mosquitoes can transmit malaria. They become infected after biting a person who is already infected with the parasite. Because the parasite is found in red blood cells of an infected person, other modes of transmission include blood transfusions, organ transplant, the sharing of used needles or syringes, or even from a mother to her baby before or during delivery, which is known as congenital malaria. For most people, symptoms begin anywhere from 10 days to four weeks after being infected. However, in P. vivax and P. ovale, some parasites can remain dormant in the liver for a few months to four years after being bitten by an infected mosquito. The first signs and symptoms of malaria are flu-like, which are headaches, fever, and nausea. Muscle aches, fatigue, chills, sweats, diarrhea, vomiting are also common symptoms to have at the beginning of disease. Malaria may cause anemia due to the loss of red blood cells, and if not promptly treated, the infection can become severe and cause kidney failure, seizures, coma, and ultimately death. Malaria is diagnosed by three main methods. Rapid diagnostic test is the quickest way of establishing the diagnosis of malaria as it detects specific antigens in the person's blood. Once a blood sample is applied on the test card, in 15 minutes, the presence of specific bands on the test card would indicate whether the patient is infected with the parasite. Despite it being time efficient and available in most clinical settings due to its low cost, it is not highly accurate. Microscopy can determine the type of malaria parasite and the percentage of red blood cells that are infected, but the results are only as proficient as the lab that perform it. Polymerase chain reaction is the most sensitive method available for optimal accuracy. Unfortunately, it is expensive and a complex method, so it is not appropriate for regular use and only for epidemiological research and surveys. Malaria should be treated within 24 hours after the first symptoms appear, before it becomes serious and life-threatening. However, treatment of a patient with malaria depends on the country's national guidelines, which typically take several aspects into consideration. Each patient goes through an algorithm to determine the treatment that is guided by infecting plasmodium species, clinical status of a patient, the expected drug susceptibility of the parasite, and the patient's previous use of malarias. General treatment involves around combination of malarial drugs depending on the specific case. With 228 million cases around the world as of 2018, malaria is responsible for the highest global disease burden of all vector-borne diseases. This is because it mostly occurs in poor, tropical, and subtropical areas. 
Malaria is also the leading cause of illness and death in most developing countries that it affects. Due to the costly expenses for drugs, treatment, prevention, clinics, lost days of work slash school, malaria imposes substantial costs on individuals, families, communities, and governments. The most vulnerable persons are those with little or no immunity against the disease, such as young children who have not yet developed partial immunity to malaria, pregnant women as pregnancy decreases immunity, and people coming from areas with little malaria transmission. It is also said that where malaria prospers the most, human societies have prospered the least. The prevalence of malaria is inversely proportional to GDP per capita, with Africa being the most affected. Like other diseases of poverty, malaria is not only an effect of poverty, but also further impoverishes families and communities. Vulnerability to malaria, like many other infectious diseases, is largely a product of social determinants of health, such as poverty, malnutrition, and insufficient access to health care. Ethical issues with malaria is that there is a high prevalence of misdiagnosis. Because malaria symptoms often mimic those of other diseases, it is often underdiagnosed in areas where incidence is rare. Diagnosis based on microscopic results is more accurate, but many patients do not receive appropriate treatment. Clinicians fear missing a case of malaria and prescribe malaria drugs even when the tests are negative. Misdiagnosed results in the wrong treatment being given, and the disease that patients do have do not get treated appropriately. Patients receive unnecessary anti-malarial medication, which is a waste of resources and as a result, raises the cost of treatment as well as the likelihood of developing drug-resistant malaria. Despite the global burden of malaria being high, the mortality of the disease are highly and easily preventable via existing interventions. The ABCD approach to prevention highlights key elements for avoiding malaria. A stands for awareness. Find out whether you're at risk for getting malaria. B is for bite prevention. Avoid being bitten by mosquitoes by using insect repellent, having a mosquito net cover your bed while sleeping, wearing long sleeves and pants to cover your arms and legs. C stands for chemophrolaxis, which is an anti-malarial drug that reduces the risk of infection. And check with your doctor to make sure you're taking the right tablets before you go. And D is for diagnosis, as you must seek medical help immediately after becoming ill in or after traveling an area where malaria is present. Thank you.